to enemy on bun line. Rapid fire! After 10 years, the war in Afghanistan is changing. The Taliban are on the back foot. These Royal Marine Commandos are pushing deep into enemy territory, seeking out the insurgents who, though on the retreat, remain a deadly force. The Marines know they could be hit at any time ambushed by gunmen or suicide bombers, indistinguishable from the local population. But the insurgents' main method of attack is now as surreptitious as it's deadly. The improvised explosive device, the IED. Out here, every footfall could invite death or serious injury. Every patrol is a dice with death. bandit country out here. The way you think about it is, say you're in a car going down the road, there's five of you in the car, you know, you've got your driver, your passenger and your three, and, and your three guys in the back. One's going to die, one's going to lose his legs, and the other three are going to be slightly injured. But you don't know which order is going to come in, and that's what it's like when you go out. It's just literally not if, but when. Coming here, getting close to guys, that you're working with are next to you and the next thing you know, the next week they're not here. It's just the worst feeling in the world. Whilst facing the threat of guerrilla warfare, the Marines must also win the hearts and minds of the local population. They must assure them of security and a future beyond war, beyond the bombs and bullets. I join 4-2 Commando of the Royal Marines to tell the extraordinary story of how they moved into a small but vital area of Helmand province and tried to wrestle it from Taliban control and give it back to the people. Nad Ali North, for years a Taliban heartland. The Royal Marine Commandos have been fighting through the area, clearing insurgents out of their former strongholds. Like this village of Loimanda, once prosperous, but now derelict, deserted, and riddled with IEDs. Good to go. Yeah, good to go. The plan is to get the village on its feet again. But first, the Royal Engineers must clear it of the IEDs. Fire it. The Taliban will do all they can to disrupt this work, so they must not be given the chance to counterattack. They have to be kept out of the village at all costs. And that's the next job for the Royal Marines. They are being sent to man outposts on the fringe of Loimanda village pin down the enemy and keep them at bay. So, Eddie, what are you up to? Uh, Loy Mande, south of uh, the village, just to go down and so catch them, uh, some of the enemy in front, disrupt and destroy, to uh, relieve the pressure on the village, so that work can go on in there with no hindrance, basically. Two Chinooks are taking these men of L Company to the most dangerous of these outposts, a place called Toki. They are to relieve their comrades of J Company, who've been under heavy fire. What was happening down there? Is it a bit quite kinetic? Uh, J Company have had quite a few injuries, uh, unfortunately, a couple of fatalities. Just going down there, securing it, just defeating Taliban, basically, yeah. Uh, as far as you know, there's quite a lot of enemy down there. Uh, yeah, quite a few. Yeah, it's been quite busy. Uh, so hopefully uh, we get amongst it, yeah. Well, take care of yourself. We'll see you down there. Yeah, OK, cheers. Just two months into a six-month tour, L Company has already lost one man to an IED and suffered five injuries. So right now, as they head back into mortal danger, they'll be feeling a mixture of fear and excitement. 
At least, that's what I feel. Because L Company has invited me along. As a one-man band who's trained with the Marines, I guess they feel they can trust me not to get in their way. For a short, sharp hop. It only takes about five minutes and we're at Toki. That said, it's impossible to go by road because of the IED threat and insurgents in the area. Look out there. It's Mad Max country. From Loy Manda village, we fly just a mile south to the British outpost. Checkpoint Toki is set in a remote farming area in a traditional Taliban heartland. But Toki is no fortified base, just an old farm compound surrounded by mud walls. Ill designed to keep out the wind and the rain, let alone bullets and bombs. A sort of latter day Rourke's Drift, with the enemy all around. They think that they only have a go at us if they think that we are vulnerable or, or they'll get away with it. And that's what it's all about, engaging them on our terms when they think they're okay. The key thing is to try and kill them if we get a chance. That's a priority. Uh, just, just show myself right this area, in the long run, doesn't matter at all. Um, it's just a series of outlying farms, fields. All that matters is turning that village to the north, the Loymander Clay, into a protected community where there's interaction with the government for the local nationals, there's Afghan security in place, and that will eventually spread out from that village. The general population around here, the farmers, are they pretty friendly? No. They, they suffer a lot from insurgent intimidation. So if they're seen talking to us within two hours, three hours, however long it takes, the insurgents will be knocking at their door, and they fear that they're going to get beaten up, they're going to get themselves in trouble, kidnapped or whatever. So always at the back of their mind is that intimidation. Toki is surrounded by IEDs, and although L Company's area of operations is small, about one square kilometre, it's probably one of the most dangerous square kilometres in the world. Uh, area we'll be working in today, OK, will be so faced. Prior to getting out on the ground, okay, the commandos are given the latest intelligence on the area and told what they might expect. As well. Like I say, most dangerous points, K okay, crossing Mercury, K okay, compound 66. Uh, that's the previous firing point also, that's where grenades were thrown onto a J company by Taliban. Uh, situation enemy forces, okay, two Taliban was killed the other day, which is fucking good news. We believe there's two five-man uh, two five -man Taliban teams out there, okay. If you do get engaged, lads, I'll go through the contacts in a bit, just, um, just go firm, okay, massive rate of fire, and for myself, I'll just take over, I'll get my map out and I'll try and uh, pin compounds that uh, we can, God us can bring the mortars onto. Uh, the main threat will be IEDs, actions on contact IED, Get an idea, okay, with golf firm, um, self treat yourself if, if you've got any arms and legs left. Okay, I'll call in the healer, so it should be a bastion, I know, within 21 minutes or whatever, okay. That's it, lads, so... Uh, the threat is not only outside the checkpoint. Tents are pitched close to the walls for fear of grenades being fired into the middle of the compound. Sentries are on watch 24 hours a day. This is Taliban country, remember. Lawless. Dangerous. So how many lads have you lost so far? From our company, we've lost one lad, Dino. He was in he was in my troop in the FSG. That was 25 days ago. Another lad in K Company died a few days ago. He was a mate of mine, Fish. And two lads in J Company. That's all been within, well, half two, was it? That's all within about six, 700 metres of here. Bang. <laughs> the bangs you hear, sometimes, you know, you're a bit like that, shit, what was that? Ooh. Sounds like mortars. Like one after the other, and usually, like the IEDs, it's obviously one big bang. You can almost feel it here. Yeah, something's going on, isn't it? Would you rather face an enemy that's firing at you rather than the IEDs? Every time, yeah. The thing is, it. You ask anybody out here, it sounds a bit daft, but you're not really concerned about like the contact. When you've got two multiples on the ground, 24 plus blokes, they'd be daft to take us on. Shitloads of IEDs about. So 
thing is here, it just seems like you're like bomb dodging, which is honking. Uh, Tolki, uh, 1 1 hotel, 3 1 hotel, radio check over. Take care, Kev. Patrols go out every day. It's important to get out there and own the ground, not only to reassure the locals, but also to intimidate the enemy. I'll leave now, but every patrol leaving the compound will have to play what the Marines call Afghan roulette. Every step a gamble, every footfall a deadly risk. At checkpoint Toki, Royal Marines of L Company are returning from their routine daily patrol, seeking out the enemy. Today, there was no contact. Okay, cheers, that lads. Good effort. Okay, we found a good couple of firing points there. Overwatch for the snipers and all that. So that's us done, yeah. Cheers, that lads. Thanks. See him hanging out with about two seconds. <laughs> In between patrols, it's a waiting game. To pass the time, there's not much to do except eat, work on the six pack, and keep sentry duty. This road here is usually mega deserted. The last few days, you've seen a lot more movement here. But again, it's rare you'll see a car. The first time I've seen a car here, we've been here nine days now. Yeah. Seen a car look dodgy because he stopped on that corner there for about five seconds moved in, went behind cover here because the road just moves behind that compound there. There's four blokes in the car when they stopped there and on the way back they only had two. It could be nothing but you don't know. Yeah. You can't just go shooting up someone because he's looking at you. Yeah. A lot of the time it could just be curiosity but... Yeah. So how long are you on watch here? Uh, it's usually one hour but I lost a game of cards so I had to do two. <laughs> <laughs> I lost a vicey. Do you? Yeah, playing shithead. When you lose, it's not good. I'm hanging out. <laughs> so at least it's not the heat of the day? Nah. Mm. Yeah, midday to about two o'clock. Yeah. Red is. Roger's garage. No, uh, higher. Joe lost yesterday, two hours, whatever. Oh, That's why I'm sitting this one out. All right. <laughs> What else do you guys play for? Uh, being a wet bitch, which involves like for 24 hours, every time you want a cup of tea, no matter what time in the night or day, you get shaken, woke up, and you have to uh, get up and put the tea on, get the wets on. <laughs> Easy tiger, uh, you need no. to get them off. How dare you? Out here, regulations and dress code are more relaxed during downtime. It's a way of keeping spirits up, helping the lads forget the immense dangers they face. On a daily basis. That's just the way I roll. <laughs> Live in the jungle, baby. You've got to wear the rig. You look like that bird from Corrie. Fucking got it, man! You do know girls are going to see this in TV. This can pull page threes. So, Eddie, 21 years old, first tour in Afghanistan. Is that what you expected? Um. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's it's different. You come out here, and even though when people are saying it's. It's 90% waiting, 10% war fighting, but it only hits home when you're actually here and you're just, some days are, are long old days with nothing. And it's a lot of waiting around and it's, it's, you don't, you don't really think about it until you're here and you're like, bloody hell, waiting around, it's been two days and I've been sat in this, this place roasting. That's and awesome, Yeah, nothing's happened, which is nature of the beast. But obviously, uh, Things do happen, and usually at the least when you expect it. So. How many shots you've had this tour? Go on. How many? How many? What's the hit ratio? Hey, I've aimed at five. <laughs> what? Don't aim. How many you fired? Twenty-nine. Huh? Twenty-nine. Tw Twenty-four hit warning five. shots. <laughs> 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 and five fucking uh, gone for the no gone for the back. One confirmed, three unconfirmed, oh, one, <laughs> one miss. Fuck off, you've hit once. 20%. Uh, I'd fancy my chances against you. <laughs> oh dear. Sticker in the tree line. South Sanger. He's dipped behind the wall. Bloke in the line through dish dash has come out, he's gone to the left. He's gone down there. 
Did he, did he go to the left hand side or the right hand side? Right, right hand side, that entrance right there. A dicker has been spotted. That's a Taliban scout. They're not going to fucking use a radio straight in front of us if they know we're going to slot them, are they? The man seen is a known Taliban spy who reports back on the Marines' movements by mobile phone. And he could be laying an IED right now. That bloke, that bloke just walked out there in a blue dish dash light, and he's just come out there, so the bloke in the white dish dash is behind that, that fucking compound oh. there, look. What about him? Yeah, he's got a mobile phone. He's got a mobile phone, he's out. got any fucking in yet? Is there any ICOM? Ooh, fucking ICOM. Head. That's intercepted yeah, communications, it, proof that a dicker is transmitting strategically important information and can therefore be shot. He is calling the call sign of Kamel. Our own interpreter scans the airway, trying to find the telltale chatter that will condemn this spy to a Royal Marine bullet. Right. The, fucking helmet the bloke in the blue isn't the one from yesterday. The bloke in the white is meant to be the one. That, that was meant to be that, that bloke was from probably, before. Twice, mate, on that day. He was definitely dicking us that day, like. He had a phone in his hand. Damn. Fucking texting Brazenly. Like, boss will go bonkers if he sees me in my fucking pants. Yeah, Roger. This is the way I do business. Right, yeah. I'm fucking talking on to that bloke with the phone. 100 metres south of this position, yeah, you can doing. see, like, an entrance to an alleyway. Little girl. Don't slaughter. The Dickers made a run for it. The trouble is that when he was in the marine sites, there was no icon chatter on the airwaves, which means this time he could not be shot. Yeah. You want to take over, mate, because you've got the kit? Yeah, yeah. If you see him, give us a shout and jump back up. Tell me what happened there. What was it, Simon? Uh, a bloke that we caught Dick in and related him to icon about two or three days ago, he just could have been seen then. So we were trying to get over there to ping him doing it again, which would give us clearance to shoot him, but. He dropped out of sight and we haven't got any hint saying that he was on uh, dicking us, but because we know who it is, we were waiting for him to make a uh, wrong move, basically pick him up and then we can prosecute with a shot. Right. You have to respond faster, don't you? Yeah, hence why I'm in my pants. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to get a shot off in this fucking rig, I'd be hoofing. <laughs> oh well. Another day. <laughs> Frustrating for the Marines, in particular for Eddie. His war got very personal just three weeks ago, and his best friend, Dean Mead, was killed by an IED. Marina uh, Mead, Dean, a very good friend of mine. I was with him when he died uh, on the 15th of May, again in Loy Mande South, it's about 700 metres down the road. And uh, yeah, I was about three blokes behind him, 15 metres. Uh, IED. Morning of the 15th. Which was uh, a difficult, a difficult day, very difficult day. Uh, probably one of the only days where it just, just, uh, just one of them. You know what I mean? Can't really explain it. But his memory will never be forgotten. Which was a good one. He was a good lad. Did everything for anybody. He didn't have to ask him twice. He was just a, a nice bloke. Which is uh, a shame his life was cut, cut short, 19 years old. What's your feeling towards the Taliban? None at all. I mean, they, they've just got a totally different attitude to life compared to, compared to your worst people in the UK, your scumbags in the UK, are tenfold over some of these people out here. It's unbelievable. And it's just got no emotion towards them at all. So you have no problem killing them? None at all. None at all. Lower. I'll be nice too, Vicey. <laughs> Paul Weiss, Vicey, 27 and already an Afghanistan veteran, has had to get used to losing friends. Out of the four fatalities we've had, you know, three of them in close friends to mine. How do you deal with that? Again, it's just, you just got to rub it in. And yeah. Uh, the first one hit me the hardest, to be honest with you, because it's the first one on the tour. And, um, I was in fucking bits for a few days, but uh, you know, it's my fourth tour out here now, so I'm, I'm fucking used to it. Then when, once you've got over it, you, know, you, you literally have got to go back on patrol the same the same day sort of thing. So you've got to try and put it from your head and get on with what you got to do. And that is, not to put too fine a point on it, killing the enemy. Not only the Taliban fighters, but also the Taliban spies, the dickers, an increasing threat to L Company. 
think it's just about time they got one, really. You know, because they've been dicking us for weeks now. We've really been around it. Because these people could be maybe these Yeah. Oh, don't get me wrong. I don't feel anything towards them. You know, fucking. They, I don't care. They're dead. They, as far as I'm concerned, they, they, they deserve it. I mean, if they're, they're cooperating, you know, even if they're flipping, just passing information along, they're not exactly the kind of blokes to stop us if we're going to walk onto an IED. He's asking about the work, how it's going on, how is the work. The other one said that everything is fine and the, the work is good, so infidels are going to get failed soon. Infidels are going to fail soon. Fighting talk from the Taliban dickers, now reporting on the Marines at every opportunity. Frank, yes, sir. Harry, yeah. Walshie. Yeah. El Company has decided to tackle the problem head on. Yeah. Well, let's prepare for orders for an ambush. Mission. We're going to lay an ambush in vicinity of Yankee One Charlie, Compound 13, in order to kill local Taliban fighters and dickers. Have an up out? Cool. Uh, if you on the map, I'll just talk to how we're going to do it. OK, uh, we'll judge it on the ground, but it's likely we'll push west to this point here. We know they follow us up. From the sort of picture, we know they follow us sort of two, three fields back. So hopefully we'll sort of see guys coming out of this tree line or coming out of this tree line here and going into compound seven um, to ask what, what we've been doing, basically. If we don't get, the Marines uh, are going to patrol towards known enemy positions as bait to attract the dickers uh, into an ambush. The if they bite sort of and are spotted, here, they'll be killed. From here, we should have good, good sort of marks on um, this sort of open killing ground here. Actions on Dickers, as I said before, we need to get that, that marrying up between the ICOM chatter and um, us seeing them with ICOM or them blatantly dicking us, okay? Um, let's not just get carried away and start fucking dropping people, I know you won't, but just fucking bearing in mind that um, we don't want to be shooting civvies. Up that, lads. 3 0 3 one out to radio check out that. Just shake out now, just so we know where we are. Woods, Pavs, Joe. It's six uh, in the morning, me. and my first patrol with L Company. Uh, what are you going to do, Chris? Just jump in the middle with me, yeah? Yeah, I'll be with you. Yeah. So we're about to go out on patrol. Um, the idea of this is to basically lay an ambush for the insurgents. Um, with one, one part of the patrol uh, drawing fire, um, they're basically the bait. And then if there is a, a bite, as it were, uh, from the insurgents, then the others will all be um, ready to pounce. Are we good to go in five, lads? We form up in a line behind the point man, who, carrying a mine detector, will lead us forward. Uh, leaving two minutes, lads. I'm about to join in in a deadly game of chance. Afghan roulette, as the Marines call it. There's only so much you can do. I mean, this area here, it, everyone knows it, it's, it's ID central. There's, 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 you know, the ground is absolutely riddled with them. Lads, that's as good to go. We're ready. I wouldn't say it throws you off your game, but it's always it's a niggling factor in your head when you're trying to you know use cover as best you can. But they know we're going to use cover, so that's where they lay their IEDs. Eventually, we are going to set patterns, and and sure as shit, they're going to get lucky. As soon as I get outside, the adrenaline begins to pump. Walking into IED Central, I know that every step forward carries the risk of injury or death. Start swinging these sluts. Uh, still work we are down at compound. Mark is here. OK. Obvious paths are avoided. Established routes given a wide berth. Tree lines, natural cover for the Marines in case of attack, are often mined. So crossing these demands particular care. Everybody keep a sharp lookout for anybody watching us basically and it's bound to be, we can't see them at the moment, but they'll be monitoring our movements all the way. If we repeat our routes, it's easy to catch us out and lay those killer traps. So every footstep is taken very gingerly, believe me. We do your best to keep in the footsteps of the man in front. But and all this in scorching heat. It's got 50 degrees today. I carry body armor and everything else. Feels more like 100 degrees. The markers for this is going to be white markers. At every tree line we stop, 
whilst the point man sweeps with his mine detector and then lays down markers to indicate the safe way through. But it's never foolproof. Up to the marker. Yeah. Left to the marker. It doesn't matter where you are in the line. It may not always be the weight of the first footstep that triggers the IED, nor the second, nor the third. It's just luck, or rather, bad luck. Go for it. Some square holes there, lads. Fucking avoid them. Chris, don't stand on those holes, mate. Back at base, the radio operators and interpreters are scanning the airwaves for any telltale ICOM chatter. They're watching us, we think, you know, a large part of the time, so they're shadowing us maybe a couple of fields behind, talking on their, uh, on their comms, seeing what we're up to, and it's quite easy for them to pick up on our patterns eventually. I mean, it's important for us to have deceptions, dog legs, keep them guessing and not give them the chance to put the ID in the right place at the right time. It's all about them getting the opportunity to catch us when they, they think we're off guard or when it's on their own terms. So if, if it gets to the point where they think that, right, we've got them here, then they'll open up with whatever they've got. The problem with the dickers, because everyone's a farmer who looks exactly the same as the insurgents, there's a lot of pressure on the lads trying to work out who so and as soon as we start getting it wrong, that's when we get ourselves with problems. Uh, Toki, uh, we just don't um, stop and cut the packs on the map. Bye, Carla. You've got some sort of memory card for a camera or something there as well, mate. Is all this, or one person? Yeah. Obviously, don't get your fingerprints all over it. We come across two Afghans on a motorbike. They are stopped, questioned, and searched as a matter of course. Uh, Tolki, uh, if you're a young man in Helmand, this is an everyday experience. Uh, Fairman, I'll tell her, uh, we've just gone firm. There's two uh, fighting age males here. We're just going to biometrically enrol them. Uh, you've probably got eyes on for the... Uh, Biometric enrolment. Fingerprinting and scanning the iris. Just doing that like local uh, population. So if anything does happen in future, uh, we can link it straight back to them. Get any IEDs, fingerprints, uh, anything like that. Okay, we can direct it straight back to these people uh, and just go and arrest them basically. Yeah, put those down as well. Is this unusual the money from sort of Pakistan there, is it? Or? What's that, Richie? There's some banknotes from Pakistan. Yeah. yeah. How come he's got them? Where is these pair going? They're going to uh, Azara. The Bazaar, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. What are they going to buy? Sheikh. <laughs> they buy the sheep. You got sheep? Yeah, buy the sheep. Ask him why he's got so much money on him. Is it all for sheep? Is it? Well, 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 it's all for sheep. 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 It's Innocent, probably. You can never be 100% sure, but there's no evidence to arrest, so we move on. We've been out now for nearly two hours, but continue on a winding, zigzagging route, still hoping to attract the enemy and draw out the dickers. We need to get them talking, and above all, transmitting. This guy's close. Finally, they take the bait. The intelligence team's radio bursts into life with the chatter of excited voices. The dickers have seen us. They said, they said be ready for them. Don't let them go anywhere. Uh, and they're talking about moving towards the village. Roger, Roger. Uh, we've got ICOM. The ICOM is accurately reporting our movements, where we've been and the direction we're going in. We're being watched at close quarters. They can see us, but so far, we can't see them. I am four hours into a patrol with the Royal Marines of L Company. We are moving through hostile territory as bait to draw out the enemy. 
Jesus. I know about amphibious troops, but fucking come on. Yeah. Our main targets today are the Dickers, Taliban spies who are known to report our movements by radio. And finally, they've taken the bait. Doug, basically, uh, they reckon a compound... Uh, through an hotel, roger, over. We have got ICOM, we've had two types of ICOM now. The second one was like the moving in and around towards the ditches. So uh, there is somebody fucking watching us around here. Yeah, you got black at the rear, just a mad compound that is watching us. A man is spotted. Farmer, insurgent, suicide bomber. Nothing found, and still no sight of the Dickers. Let's stop, start these patrols. On a few metres down, take stock of the situation, read the, what they call, atmospherics. It's very quiet. Sometimes quiet's not good. Sometimes, if the locals know something's up, they'll, they'll hide. They're going to the compounds, lie low. That could be an indication that uh, something's about to kick off. Or not. You just can't tell. I just saw him purge the same bloke back in the trees, and Luke Van is back in the same position. Then, Vice spots two men who could be following us. Where's that, Vicey? Directly to the rear, mate. The two guys stood there. Uh, they've watched, I've been watching them, they've watched all our drills coming right across this uh, ground as we've got this far. If they move up to the next crossing as we're going up here, then let them have it. Yeah, Perds, maybe a uh, warning shot from the uh, bloke in front of you first, mate. Somebody watching us, Les? Yeah, to the rear. I'm just going to see if they keep moving up with us. We'll give them a warning shot. Seems we're being watched. They're two suspicious characters. If they continue to follow us and monitor us, there's going to be a warning shot. Um, if they continue after that, there'll be more shots. But there won't be warning shots. Uh, free for data, free for data. We're going to fire a uh, one warning shot uh, to two blokes that have been following us to the north behind us, over. Yeah, Roger, keep eyes on. A warning shot. Les, see him now stood up and his mate's thinned out to the east. Roger, mate. Vice's warning shot has effect. The suspects move away. But do we follow them? Or is this all part of a ploy to lead us on to IEDs? What are you thinking, mate? <laughs> Don't feel right. The farmers in the next field are asked if they recognise the two suspects and whether it's safe to follow them. The locals saying that he's scared to go that way. Um, whether the Taliban are there or not, I don't know. We decide to follow carefully. Yeah, lad, I'm reckoning the, the tree line's wired and they're, uh, and they're obviously waiting for the fucking fireworks. The next tree line may well be booby trapped. Uh, let's switch on them as quick as we can, get one across. It's a great relief to get across the tree line. But the fact that we do is immediately reported by whoever's watching us in a burst of ICOM chatter. They said that uh, we are ordering. The other one said we are still there in their place. So the other one said, uh, have you set up the big things for them? Big things means ID, yeah. command ID or something like yeah, that. Yeah. So the other one said, yeah, I set, I set up for them. That No worries. We are closing in on the Dickers. But because we know from a range of evidence, including the ICOM chatter, that they're drawing us onto IEDs or into an ambush, the Marines 
have to act fast. There's about four or five blokes along the side there, running out, having a look at us and then running back in. Update again. To our half right, right, we've just seen at least five males run into the back of a compound. Just on the other side of the tree line, a volley of warning shots is unleashed. Make sure you're fucking ID in, though. But the dickers don't run away. They keep dodging behind a compound wall, phones to their heads. You have a look, eh? No, no waistcoat, just white. Sharpshooters take aim. This time, it's shoot to kill. Go! Yes, yeah, yeah, lads, fucking good shooting. We think we've hit two. Um, one of them scarped off uh, to the east. Those shots have left at least two dickers dead. Have you got eyes on the body, over? Yeah, Roger. This is Turkey reference, you engage the dickers. I can't move now, I'm saying airports got one of them out. The lads at the front killed two of them, then it came over the icon, be careful. You know, they, they've cottoned on to what we're doing. One was on the corner there, he had a few rounds, but I think he might have got away. And then his mate, the you know, they work, they work in teams of two, three, four and five. His mate came along there, thinking he was clever, with his icon's going to walk in his hand against the wall. And then, well, good night, Vienna. That's him. Yeah, Sam, mate. Keep an eye on that corner as well, make sure you don't come out. So, it looks like a third dicker has been killed. But the shock of killing another human being does not seem to visit these men immediately. It's something they absorb and have to remain matter-of-fact about. I've come to learn this is their way of dealing with it. Les, what do you want to do about this body? No, mate, my body, the one I just killed. Uh, as soon as we came through here, the dickens green kicked off. Um, it was mega happy days. Uh, we saw guys there and over there that were blatantly dicking us, you know, ducking in and out. Um, Basically, they're talking about lane IDs. Um, so basically, we, we shot one of them, shot the other one, and then straight away, ICOM scanner said, you know, they've hit some of our guys, uh, be careful. So, massive result for us. Hit a couple of dickers, you know, stop the ID lane and stuff. Some good shooting as well. <laughs> yeah. I had eyes on that fucking guy. We two nine nine. Yeah. Bush. yeah nah. But it's not over yet. More Taliban have been spotted. So we're keeping eyes on, and if he pops his head out again, another man walking there. Some bloke in a white dish dash. Coming around that corner. Seen, seen, seen. Yeah. Hang on. He is. No, well, stop, 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 stop. They're sending kids out, mate. They're jackers. Fuck, aren't they? How could you send fucking kids out? Why would the Taliban send kids out? Because we don't shoot kids. So they can send their kids out to look at us to see what they're doing without us then engaging them. Yeah. So. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's terrible. So if you just the information, all I can chat and stop. Yeah, because they're all dead. Can they give me a quick sit, right? Yeah, what's happening now is um, the ICOM chat was suggesting uh, we'd killed one of them and they were warning the others um, to be careful in the area. Um, we PID'd another insurgent with their actual radio in his hand and was engaged him. Um, since then, there's been no more icon chatter on the net, um, suggesting that the two people we've killed were the only two people with icon. The problem has been in the past, we've not been able to PID actual radios or them actual dick enough. No. However, today they seem to be quite open about it. And even on the Sangas earlier, we uh, pinged quite a few radios and just didn't have time to engage. Um, so it suggests they're getting a bit bit bold, which is good for us because we're able to deal with them. Yeah. Just to where they come out. There's no one running across there, see him? But there was a male that walked. They've got the burial party coming out now. Just outside the compound, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Just children about to approach the body now. So we came out to lay an ambush, but in fact ended up uh, responding to Taliban lookout stickers, uh, two of which are now dead. But um, as far as the Marines are concerned, this is a big result. Because that means it's two, two less people laying IEDs. Well, we're going over towards that body. Roger. You got one here? Yeah? Yeah, there are two 
possibly three bodies up by that compound wall, which is clearly stirring up the locals. Nevertheless, the dead dickers need to be identified, so a patrol is sent to do just that. Can if you think it's safe, get up on the body. OK, but I obviously don't take any risk for that. But have the survivors fled, or are they laying in wait? Stop bunching up, lads. Fucking space out. Yeah, Roger, we haven't got eyes on. They may be digging the bodies and that. L Company has killed up to three dickers or Taliban spies. I'm with six of the commandos who've been sent forward to check the first of the dead bodies. We stay as safe as we can. As soon as we see anything dodgy or we think we're being fucking dicked or anything like that, we'll just pull back and fuck it off. Happy that over? Yeah, Roger. Is anybody watching the compound? Dust coming up, some kind of activities inside. Some men have joined the children and are swarming around the bodies. The patrol sergeant becomes suspicious. Be aware that there's already been um, local populace around that body um, messing with it. Uh, we don't know what they've done and they could have booby trapped it for a start. We need to stay clear of that body. Yeah, Roger, to be honest, I think we've done enough here. I think we're pulling back now. Um, if you mark it up on the map where that position was, uh, I'm not happy we've been fixing this area for quite a while, so we're going to pull back over. Thank you, yeah. Roger, have with that. Boss, Jim, drop me on you. Yeah, start leading off, lads. Uh, basically, we're going to follow mortars. They've stopped moving now, um, and we're going to... Uh, we're basically going to lead off pretty much the same route we came, but mixing it up uh, straight back in. We've had our results. So we'll, uh, we'll call it a day from there, over. There's some indication there might be an attack. Could be that the uh, Marines have riled a hornet's nest today. There's no way of knowing how the Taliban respond to these things. They could launch an attack, a shoot and scoot as they call them, quick hit and run. They could just melt into the countryside and wait until another day, another day. After eight hours on the ground, we make it back to the checkpoint, but no one feels safe until the final footstep into the compound. Good effort, Good effort. That's a perfect temperature as well. That's just above volcanic. <laughs> Patrol complete. That's uh, my call sign, 34 Delta's call sign complete in your location. Local intelligence has already confirmed that those killed were known Taliban fighters. It takes a couple, boss, isn't it? Be happy now, lads, aren't they? First one, centre of mass, guaranteed hit. Definitely. So basically, that's the result. I mean, in terms of sort of teams of work around here, we have sort of um, five-man teams. Um, so that could be a whole team taken out straight away. So fucking good result, basically. Happy days, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. You all right now? Oh, I enjoyed it, yeah. Yeah, got a few, didn't we? I expected. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they expected it. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's uh, always good to fucking get a bit of success, isn't it? A bit of justice. Dean Mead. <coughs> How was that for you guys? Are you alright? Yeah, notch another one. No biggie, is it? <laughs> <laughs> one more to the tally. Just can't wait for the fucking sleep tonight. <laughs> Night terrors. Oh dear. The best word to describe them is fucking cowards. They, they realise they can't stand and fight us, so they're just resorting to dirty tactics, you know, and prove how cowardice they are. I mean, they get children to do their dirty work for them, you know, get, send them out to watch us, then report them to us, and women, you know, if they want to flip and take us on, take us on. Don't, don't be fucking pussies about it. You know, I fucking hate them, all of them. Next time. There's four of them, five of them. The Taliban attack. And L Company unleashes hell. Alpha, 
and that's next next Monday at nine. The weather forecast is turning sub-zero this week, but luckily we've some guys on hand to make life a bit easier. Catch Winter Road Rescue, brand new Thursday at nine. We've action with Bruce Willis up next in Striking Distance.